let's go. The Walking Dead was all I cared about for two years. First thing I thought of when I woke up and last thing I thought of I went to sleep. At the moment you put something out into the world, that is the most nerve wracking time. Walking Dead season one was a part of a, a time where narrative was showing that it could be valuable. A lot of our work often touched people's lives in ways that we could not imagine. The very first prototype was for a different zombie thing that ended up turning into The Walking Dead. Here we are 10 years later. For several years, um, we've been making adventure games um, similar more to the uh, pedigree of the folks who started the studio from LucasArts. Sean and I in the studio at large had been talking about doing a game with real-time events instead of a point-and-click game, doing a game with persistent choices. Someone at Telltale, I think, met Robert Kirkman at Comic-Con and just okay. said, hey, uh, we make video games. A lot of them are based on comic books. Are you interested in that? And I think that he knew us because we had made a game based on Strong Bad. I was a huge Homestar Runner fan, uh, still am. And uh, so, yeah, that was my main uh, uh, experience with Telltale. And when you look at the landscape, it's like, uh, you know, like, uh, Call of Duty shooting zombies and, uh, you know, Left 4 Dead was out. And it was a bunch of like really expensive, really cool games with people like running around killing zombies. And I thought, well, you know, if you do a Walking Dead game where it's just people running around killing zombies, it's kind of been done before. And so when Telltale told me about their approach, where it was, you know, very story based, very narrative, uh, that seemed to be exactly what The Walking Dead needed. And so it was, uh, you know, I'll say no brainer. This period of time, we were able to work on the story of the game in a relative isolation. And a bunch of smart programmers and choreo people made Walking Dead prototypes where the idea was just like, interact with this movie where you're the main character. The morgue set, which was actually the original art test scene that was built for the game, which a great was, looking set. it looks awesome. It wasn't even intended to ever be a real game space, but then we turned it into one in the fifth episode when, uh, when oh, Lee wakes yeah. up in the hospital. Yeah, like a modified yeah. version of that scene comes back in F5. And we discovered a bunch of really great stuff and a lot of cool tricks and very, very first Walking Dead prototype, which actually was for a different zombie thing that ended up turning into the Walking Dead. The first conversation was actually with Valve and it was about what if we did a narrative side story in the universe of Left 4 Dead. That was when Sean and Carl had started this prototype of the sort of the boiling pots or spinning plates. And, all and that, that was a text was, game. That was a text yeah, game. But it was just a bunch of progress bars if you didn't check on enough people, they would either boil over or one of their events would cause someone else's story to like overcharge and start messing up. We didn't end up making a Left 4 Dead game. I'm really glad that didn't work out. But it turns out that thematically, that's actually a lot closer to what The Walking Dead is about than, than yeah. Left 4 Dead or even a lot of other zombie franchises. So it ended up being a really good fit. I figured the comic books and the TV show are now going to focus on Rick Grimes. And so when we started talking to Telltale, I, I thought, you know, it'd be really great if, you know, it wasn't just another adaptation of the same story that you're getting from the comics and from the and from the show. It was a long journey to get to it. It was a I long like. journey. Originally, we wanted to tell a story about a young man who was raising his sister. It was pretty clear that building a character history between two characters that had a character history was gonna be really tough. Then we get to like build a relationship from scratch. But I remember you were really excited that you got to write a scene in a game and that we were gonna get to put a scene in a game where it mattered that like a little girl stubbed her finger when moving a desk. Let's get this cut covered up. Yes, please. When to coming up with Lee Everett, like I was like, I just started channeling a college professor that I had. It should be my writing professor. Like it just needs to be that guy. Who's an unlikely person to go to jail? Lee Everett had been a college professor, found his wife cheating, killed the wife and the boyfriend. His taking care of this little girl is his redemption. It, he gets to have a life back uh, and be able to do something good. Writing for a small child and the way that they talk and think, they, in a sense, kind of made that part of my journey 
really easy. It felt pretty good working on it, you know, because I was working with a character that actually had like a narrative story. It wasn't just like running and throwing a grenade or ducking and all that sort of stuff that we do so often and still do. We got walkers all around us. Hell, if now ain't the time for a drink? The way that the Walking Dead games work, you kind of train yourself to start creating a story where you have to treat all of the possible choices you put into the game as your own improv partner. That ended up kind of being the fun of it, of like a player to chooses to say nothing at a moment that is kind of mind boggling that you wouldn't say something. Maybe you get to do something kind of mind boggling in return. Leading up to the release of episode one, you did have a feeling that, that people might like it. Oh no. No? <laughs> No, 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 absolutely no. Um, so the thing you have to remember is that we liked everything we'd ever made, uh, Telltale. Like, it's a game that has an ambiguous genre, and we had no idea how it'd be received. At the moment you put something out into the world, that is the most nerve wracking time because you know you've worked on it for such a long time, you put your heart and soul into it. And now, you know, the, the judgment will be rendered and you just hope that people are, people are going to like it. Yeah, like once the first episode shipped, it was a massive hit and we were kind of like, huh. I mean, the thing I will say about every single actor on the, the game is they cared so much. And then once they started getting the feedback from fans that the fans cared about them, it created this feedback loop where they would come into the studio in later episodes and go like, Oh, I just gotta like, gotta do, like, what's gonna, what's, what's happening to her? Like, what are we gonna do to her? Like, what's, let's, let's go. Once fans were responding to that after episode one came out, then there we had to take a hard look at episode two and kind of see the things that had changed um, about kind of the the format for the game. Um, I think there was more puzzly elements that we experimented with, and then as the season went on kind of pulled back on them a bit. My favorite thing was to play The Walking Dead uh, at home, come into work at IGN the next day and sit down. Me, me and Mitch Dyer would go into a conference room and we would run through every choice and every decision. And inevitably, when one of us would say they did the opposite or did something the other didn't even know about, there'd be this, what? Why would you ever do that? Blah, blah, blah. But we had justification as the character, as ourselves, from the hours we'd already played of why our Lee would do that. Dennis and I went to IGN to do a uh, spot with Greg Miller. He's just like, dude, this is gonna be, this is gonna be huge. I was just like, Dennis and I looked at each other like, what do you, okay. Like totally confused, totally like thought he was talking to the wrong person, you know? I don't know how it felt because I have yeah, no me real memory of the middle of the season. I feel like- I yeah, same. I'm like, ep- I just feel like it was like, uh, like running a marathon and like the miles are peeling off and it felt like the stakes were getting higher in terms of landing the plane. I think episode five might have my favorite stuff in it though. Like the action scene of like getting through the street, the cutting off the arm scene. I'll go as fast as I can. The this, this sitting down with the stranger. Everything about that episode was like telltale at its absolute best, hitting it like all cylinders. The Walking Dead was all I cared about for two years. But in terms of customer response and like how it was going and like the the hubbub, I didn't feel anything until the Game Awards. I didn't feel anything. And the BBA Tech Game of the Year goes to the Walking Dead. It's a singular experience i remember thinking as i'm in that room and we're all tucked up and dressed up uh and thinking this isn't anything i ever expected in my career let me take this in i still have such a huge connection to the fans and people still reach out to me and this will continue and this will go this will go on i'm just incredibly proud and, and pleased to have, have been a part of it you know i've been very very fortunate in my career so the walking dead is, is is up there for me walking dead season one was a part of a, a time where narrative was showing that it could be valuable in games especially um when the story is affected by how you play and it kind of shaped a lot of what happened after that. 
for Telltale, for the people at Telltale, for myself, definitely. It is a huge achievement. I mean, I think of all the awards that it got and all the notice it got at the time and how it's still such a huge part of people's lives a decade later. I think it's led to even more games that I love and I think you know, the expansion of what people believe is a game. More than just us working on a game, it really was something that changed pretty much everything, I think, for all of us. It was the first time that I got to see what the sort of like lightning in a bottle looks like with people who are working for the thrill and passion of it. Like who are just so pot committed to the ideas that you've all come up with together and to figuring out how they assemble themselves as a game. To get exposed to that is the thing that changed my life. Special and heartfelt thanks to everyone at Telltale who did three more seasons and the Michonne game after we left. It, it means a lot that it continued to exist for so long afterwards and that it meant a lot to people, including the people who worked on it. That's just an incredible thing. That's the way it should be. That's what Robert did to us. He's like, go make it yours. When we were working on The Walking Dead and Breaking Story, that room looked much like you would imagine a, you know, a TV writer's room would look like. Sean and Jake would be you know, up front with the whiteboard, the writers and the development team would be sitting around the table kind of figuring stuff out. But I always imagined that there was an extra chair around the table that no one was sitting in. And I remember thinking that that chair will eventually be filled by the player of the game because they're the last link in the storytelling process. Mm -hmm.